1 Timothy chapter number 4. I will start by saying, I don't know if this is going to be a two-week, a three-week, or if I'll be teaching this for the rest of the year. I do not know, but we'll teach it as long as, you know, the Lord keeps laying it on my heart and until it gets done. But morning, or this morning is an introduction for things that we have to cover before we can get to the other things. Okay, so this is by no means exhaustive, so keep that in mind. But 1 Timothy chapter number 4, we'll begin reading in verse number 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Now, from verse number three down to verse number five, okay, that's talking about a particular doctrine of the day in which Paul lived in, in which Timothy lived in. It's also talking about something that even today still went on. We read a few of those verses back when we taught on Lent and how, you know, Lent, one, you're not going to find it in the Bible, two, it's pagan, it has pagan roots. And then you get all the way into, well, they forbid you to eat certain things throughout the period of Lent for everybody in general, where you can specifically give up more. And then on Fridays, y'all can have fish. And... So why McDonald's, you know, always has to make sure that they bring the filet of fish back in time for Lent. Why, well, all of that, we can trace this to, in this passage, referring to some of those people, but what verses number three through five get to is, well, essentially what Paul said, all things are lawful, not all things are expedient. God gave us the food. If it's received with thanksgiving and prayer, if it's sanctified by that thanksgiving, by prayer, we're giving thanks to God for giving it to us, nothing is permitted when it comes to food. Okay, but that's not what we're going to be teaching on today. But that is a picture of the mindset of those that we are going to be talking about today. Okay, which is why we read those verses. Verse number one, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Well, who's that talking? That's talking about safe folk. Right. You cannot depart from something that you did not know. Right. You cannot leave what you were not a part of. Okay, so this is talking about safe folk. When's it talking about? Well, in the latter times. Right? Are we not today closer to Jesus' coming than ever? Is not all of the major prophecy that is required in the Word of God to be fulfilled before Christ comes back, has it not already been fulfilled? Right? We are on the cusp. So certainly this is talking about today's age. But why do those depart from the faith? They give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Well... We can certainly define what a spirit is. Well, it's a lowercase spirit, so it's not talking about the spirit of God. Okay, it could be talking about the spirits of those that are doing the seducing. Well, who would those be? Well, there are those that are false prophets. It could be talking about the spirit of those that they have an evil spirit within them and they're doing the seducing. Well, that could be the case, but certainly it's talking about those spirits that also fell with Lucifer when he was kicked out of heaven. Did not Jesus say in his own words that he saw Lucifer or Satan fall from heaven as a lightning bolt? He saw him kicked out and a third of the angels in heaven with him. Those that followed him. It's talking about those spirits. The spirits that are contrary to the spirit of God. The spirits that because they are no longer in heaven, God every now and then does give them rule and reign to seduce people on the earth. Which is why the latter part of the verse says, and the doctrines of devils. Now, people generally will refer to the devil, talking about Satan, right, Lucifer. But devils, throughout the Bible, you see that. What Hollywood may call it, or what popular culture may call it, would be demons. Right? Well, what are the demons? They're the spirits that fell with Lucifer. Okay, they are... The devil and his angels, as the Bible calls it. Okay, so it's the doctrine of devils. It's the seducing spirits of those devils that lead men astray. But we're not talking about lost folk. We're talking about those that know the voice of the Lord, that have received the Holy Spirit to indwell them. 
And yet, those people, Paul wrote, in the latter times, would give heed to seducing spirits and would believe the doctrines of devils, and that's what led them away from the faith. Why do so many claim to be Christians? And that's between them and God. I don't know. Man looketh on the outward appearance, God looketh on the heart. But why do so many claim to know him or claim to be Christians, and yet they'll never darken the doors of a church house? They've been led away from the faith by the doctrine of devils and seducing spirits. But we're going to eventually, again, as I said, we've only got so much time today, and I don't know how long it's going to take to get through. But today we're doing the overview on what the doctrine of those devils would be. What seducing spirits used to lure people away. But in the coming weeks, Lord willing, as long as he lets me teach on it, we're going to show you how all of these things and the things that are so prevalent in society today that we don't even bat an eye at it. How they all come originally from satanic or demonic worship. How they have always been principles, and we're going to show you today from the beginning, on things that have always led men away. But if we were to go back into the Old Testament, if we were to go back into the histories and look at things that have been recorded by righteous individuals, we could see that, yeah, those things used to be a part of demon worship. But the devil has made them so integrated into society today, you don't have to worship the demon. The doctrine's out there. Right. Doesn't have to be propagated like it once was by what we would call sorcerers or magicians or seers because it's already so much a part of daily life that people just buy into it. They may never do a ritual. They may never draw a circle in the sand. Right? They may never cut themselves as those that were trying to pray down fire in Elijah's day. But those things are a part of, in the essence of, demonic worship or satanic worship. So what the Lord tell, the series, I guess you could call it, or the two-parter, however long it is, we're going to be talking about spiritual warfare, but today we're looking at seductive doctrines of devils seductive doctrines of devils because aren't people led away by seducing spirits with the doctrines of devils Amen. first off the first doctrine of the devil and his angels is self deification right. self deification yeah. now I don't we may not get past this point today brother David I don't know this could be a long point but I've got the, the road map in front of me but I'm going to do my best to mind the Holy Spirit and get to what he wants me to get to but Genesis 3, verse number 5. This is the serpent talking to Eve. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. From the beginning, from the garden, what was the doctrine of the devil, and now the doctrine of his devils, the angels, that fell with them, that are trying to seduce men away from the faith? Those that have already bought into Christ. And... Don't be deceived. He uses this to also keep people from trusting in Christ. Amen. It is the idea of self-deification. You can make yourself into what you need to be Amen. to spiritually arrive at where you need to be. That is the message of the spirit of Antichrist. We can go through the Bible and look at how Antichrist and the spirit, they may not be the Antichrist, but the spirit of Antichrist is you don't need Christ. What do you think all of these pagan religions throughout the years, the things that they worship, where do you think that they came from? They are demons that gave them what they wanted to hear, showed them a way that they could make themselves worthy to attain something greater. What was the doctrine of Buddha? That if you go and sit somewhere and meditate long enough, you will attain enlightenment. And through enlightenment, you will now know what you need to do so that you can spiritually become the being that you were meant to be. Why do you think that Hinduism has millions of gods, deities that they will make forms of, that they will pray unto? Because all these different people throughout the years were spiritually looking for something. Man knows in his own soul that he doesn't uh, he doesn't have, he doesn't obtain what he needs to be on his own. Because we know that there's a God somewhere. 
in our very soul. That's why you can go into jungles and find totem poles and you can find people worshiping something. Even if it's Father Sky and Mother Earth, they know that, you know, we can look around and know that the creation didn't create any of this. There's something bigger than us. But those demons throughout the thousands of years, people searching, they will deceive them. And then someone gave a name to them. Or those spirits gave a name to themselves. And people now worship, the, if I can do what that thing said, then I can become what I need to be. It's all about works. Self-deification is you don't need Christ or God. You are able to make yourself into what you need to be. And as I've been studying, there was one day when, you know, Don, when God let it dawn on me, exactly how much of this is so prevalent in society I almost got sick to my stomach researching where it came from how it all started anything that calls itself new age run from it new ageism is nothing but a whole bunch of idolatry it's a whole bunch of satanism and it's a whole bunch of devil worship that now they have mainstreamed anybody know what the purpose originally of yoga was now I'm not saying that yoga in itself is it it's an exercise people later have realized well you can do that and you can strengthen muscles but originally it was conforming yourself to mimic things in nature so that you could spiritually harmonize yourself with nature and attain spiritual enlightenment that's why half of the things in yoga are named after things in nature you are taking on the form or the position of things in nature to take on the characteristics of the things in nature so that you can make yourself a part of nature. But I'm not just talking about paganism or false religion. I'm talking about people that claim to be Christian. Yeah, right. Self-deification. Satan told Eve, you will become as gods. Do you know that really? And not by, I mean, we'll bring this out. But in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, it says that without penance, without going through and giving up something, you cannot attain salvation. Now, do you know what that used to mean? They would take whips with spikes and they would strike themselves on the back. They would cause themselves to bleed. That's devil worship. Nowadays, they will teach you that if you give, or if you do, they've amended it. Because some people didn't buy it, and that's the last point we're going to get to. The devil always tries to mimic the things of God. He will try to get as close as he can to God, but he knows that he can't be God. And he's trying to get as close as he can to deceive not just those that don't believe, but even believers. And today it's so popular that people don't even think about it on a second thought. Anything that tells you that it is truly a self-help, it originates from Satan. I'm not talking about psychiatry. That's the diagnosis and the treatment of mental illnesses. But psychology? That's got a whole lot of demonism in it. That your life will be better if you do this. It is you can make yourself into what you need to be. I found out there's a society of so-called Christian psychology. There's over 200,000 members. The only way you could really be a Christian psychologist is if you gave them this. Now, I'm not talking about godly counsel. That's not psychology. I'm talk talking about, you know, if you were to go down and sit, meet with a man. Like, the Bible talks about there's great value in godly counsel. But that's not their opinion on how you can make yourself better. That is them relaying to you what God has said in his word. But the world will come up with programs. AA, it's got roots in Satanism. That you, through making amends, that you, doesn't say recognizing God, a higher power, that's been talked about for years. But everything about it is you making good the things that were once bad about you. And all of that has origins all the way back. Every demonic religion, every satanic religion, 
everything that is not of God that has the spirit of Antichrist will tell you, well, you just need a guide. Somebody that knows more than you to show you how to start the path, and then you can do it from there on out. My Bible tells me I can do all things, but not of myself, through Christ. My Bible tells me that He is the way, the truth, and the life. My Bible tells me that all my righteousness is as filthy rags. But the philosophy of the world is that you can make yourself into a God. They may not use those words. They may use enlightenment. They may call it attaining a higher level. What do you think the doctrine of reincarnation is? You can improve yourself to the next level and the next level and the next level until you become the most holy thing that you can be. In fact, I mean, we've already knocked on them. We might as well continue to do it. Why do you think the Catholic Church elevates Mary? Because Mary was flesh. Mary was man. And if Mary found grace in the eyes of God, then you can too. You may need Mary's help, but they teach that Mary's an intermediary between God and man. No, that's the man Christ Jesus. They teach that Mary can answer your prayers. Wrong. They can teach that Mary can carry your prayers to God. No, that's the Holy Spirit's job. In fact, the Bible tells me I've been made a king and a priest, a priest that I can enter into the throne room of God directly. I pray directly to God. But see, demon, it, it, it starts very far away. Things that used to be widely accepted as wicked, but throughout the years, it's been changed and it's been conformed. And it looks very similar because it's very enticing because if it wasn't enticing, it wouldn't draw away those from the faith. But it's become so widely accepted. And do you know why? Because people stopped getting in the Word of God and looking for the things that were not of God and stopped saying, that's wicked. There was a time in America where if you did these things... People would, you'd be cast out from society. You'd be an outcast. You may still live in it and walk among it, but everywhere you went, people would know that person's wicked because of what they do. Not because I think so, but because the Bible says so. Not in my judgment, but the idea, don't do what they do. Doesn't the Bible tell us to mark those that teach false doctrines, that propagate these things? Somewhere along the lines, people stop doing that. And somewhere along the line, people found these doctrines and they tweaked them so that they could make a dollar. If I combine this with what I've been taught in church, that's easy for people to do. And it all has roots in self-deification, which isn't that really the sin or the rebellion that caused Lucifer to be kicked out of heaven. That he, as the minister of music, deserved more praise than the one that he was writing songs about to worship. And when he tried to exalt his throne above God's, he was cast out of heaven with a third of the angels that joined with him, and they've been propagating the same doctrine ever since. But one of the other teachings of the devil is self-service. Acts chapter number 5, starting in verse number 3. Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? After it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all of them that heard these things. Really, when you break it down, what was Ananias guilty of? He desired to serve himself more than he desired to serve God, but he wanted all of the recognition that he was doing for God everything that everybody else was doing. You see, some of the other people gave all, the Bible tells us. And Ananias and Sapphira wanted to be counted among those that gave all. They didn't want to look like they were in it halfway, but in doing so, they did reveal that they weren't in it all. Man cannot serve two masters. They desired to serve themselves. Well, where did that thought come from? Peter said it himself in verse number 3. Why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? And, it says, to keep back part of the price of the land. Then 
in verse number 4, why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? The thought was put in there by Satan, but Ananias developed the thought in order to do the deed. It's a, doc, it's a principle, it's a teaching of these demonic things. But it does take action. Amen. You do not find yourself away from God. You have to turn from God. Because right. the Bible says you're either all in or you're all out. Right. Right. You either love one and hate the other. You can't be betwixt. Because right. the moment that you try to reach for the world, you've already let go of God. But what is the doctrine that Ananias and Sapphira, they wanted to keep back part for themselves. Well, first, I mean, we could teach on how they didn't believe that God, if they gave it all to him, would take care of them. Maybe that's what it was. I don't know. We weren't there. We could teach on, well, maybe it was just greed. The love of money is the root of all evil. Why? Because the devil and the doctrine of the devil is with that money, you can better yourself. That will do more good for you than it would if you gave it to God. I mean, wasn't that what Achan did? Yeah. Touch not the unclean thing, but man, I like that Babylonian garment. Yeah. I like that wedge, a precious metal. That'd do a whole lot more good for me than it would if God destroyed it over there in that city. Self-service. Didn't Peter tell him, why hast thou lied to the Holy Ghost? You will lie to the very God of creation that knows your heart better than you know it. Because the heart is deceitfully wicked and no man can know it. But God knew you before he made you in the belly. And if you serve self, you'll lie to the very God of creation. Why? Because in your eyes, you have dethroned God in your heart. And now you sit upon that throne. You are no longer a servant of the Lord now. In all honesty, you've made an idol of yourself and you serve yourself. When you do what you want to do, but we know the doctrine of sin. That's my right to my claim to myself. Right. Right? That is what sin is. I'll do what I want to do. But when you serve yourself, I will cut things out of my life so that I can do this more often. I will associate with people that will enable me to do this more easily. That's more than just sin. That's more than just distancing yourself. That's worshiping something other than God. That's getting to the point that you will move against, act against, fight against the things of God to stay where you are. Why do some people not come? Well, certainly some people that have been in the world, they're embarrassed to come back because of what they used to be. Some people may, in their heart, justify their reason for that. Well, they won't ever forgive me. Doesn't ma Who cares what people think? Jesus will forgive you. First John, chapter number 3. And if it's under the blood, that's good enough for me. But they've been so blinded and so led away from the faith that now the devil has them in the snare and he dominates them. Not because God didn't want to help them, not because God didn't want to have a fellowship or a relationship with them, but because they forsook God and through self-service led themselves away from God and now they're exactly where Satan wanted them. If you get your eyes off of God and solely on you, the devil's got a whole lot of things in the world that eventually we're going to cover that aren't anywhere based in Scripture, but they all serve the self. Why do you think the love of mothers is wax cold? Because the world has taught them to care about themselves and not about children. Why do parents abandon children to grandparents? Because they've been taught by the world, it's okay to just care about you. I did find, I don't know, about three weeks ago, the statistics for the first time since 1972... In the year 2018, abortion rates decreased. But they're still at one-third. For every two babies born, one's aborted. Why did that become so prevalent? I don't want to care about the life that I'm responsible for creating. I just care about me. 
You know the law that they passed in New York to extend the umbrella of abortion has in there that if there's any harm, risk, or burden placed upon the mother, they can have an abortion. First they'll say, well, it's just talking about a health burden, that if it's unhealthy for the mother. And then the argument is, well, if it's a financial burden, if it's an emotional burden, if it's inconvenient for that person to have the baby, if you can prove that there's one night that they're going to lose sleep because of that baby, it'll get to that point. And you say, no, it won't. That's what they said back in Roe v. Wade. No, this is to make things safe and to make things you know, healthy. For, they're going to have it anyway. We might as well make sure that it's done properly. And now you've got Planned Parenthood that makes, you look at the books, 50% of their money comes from abortions. They try and hide it and disguise it, and they pull a whole bunch of accounting magic. But everything that happens, it's not done safely. In fact, they've proven that it's you know, unsanitary, that people you know, can get infections and a whole bunch of other things because they're doing them so quick, there's no way to sterilize everything. Where did all that start? Service of self. The doctrine of the devil will teach you it's better to let other people do for you and you do nothing. Others will serve you if you do the things the way that we outline them. Why do you think so many people depend on the government to fix your problems? I've got an idea. How about you ask God to fix your problems and then maybe God will fix the problems in Washington. How about God solve my problems? And what are those problems most of the time for people? They've got something before God. They've forsaken Him. They've fallen away from the faith. But thirdly, y'all about ready to die. Another doctrine. Self-defilement. If you put yourself in a position that you cannot have fellowship with God, whether knowingly or unknowingly, Throughout the Old Testament, there are many that were the children of Israel. They may have been brought up in a false teaching. They may have been born at a time when it was unholy, the things that were going on in Israel, and they were taught unholy things. They may not have known better in the flesh, but if you can unknowingly defile yourself before God, God still can't be fellowshipping with you. You can't have the relationship with God. Because if you would have been diligent to read and to study and to disciple yourself through the Holy Spirit, you would have found out those things would defile you. Yeah. Or you may have once known, but you have forgotten. And some willingly do it. Right. Then rebellion. Right. Some do it in, and I don't understand how, but they do it in defiance of God. Yeah. Daring God to do something. Revelation, chapter number 2, talking to the church of Pergamos, verse number 12. Jesus tells John to write this, And to the angel of the church of Pergamos write, These things saith, saith he that hath a sharp sword with two edges, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. God knows what Satan's up to. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days where Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak, to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Now there it's talking about spir spiritual fornication. The next passage you'll read about Jezebel, who committed literal fornication. But Jesus said, you guys haven't forsaken the faith. But you allow those that do these things to be among you. He said, you've separated yourself, but you've let enemies infiltrate the camp. That's what he's saying. But what were these people guilty of? Well, they had the doctrine of Balaam, which was what? To curse or to hinder the people of God. To eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication, fornication to worship false idols. But it's this eat the meat sacrificed unto idols. This is where people are blinded to 
because they don't realize what's going on here. They don't think of things biblically. Literally, in this passage, it's talking about where Pergamos was. It was a very idolatrous nation. Christ said, Satan has a seat among you where this church is. But he says, you've held the faith. You've had those that were martyred because they hated you so much. But he's saying, those idolaters, they would sacrifice certain things from animals unto false gods. And I mean, we could study it out. In fact, Hollywood has made light of it. They've made it so common that, you know, they could put it in movies now and people don't think twice about it. But they would take the liver of an animal and they would try to divine based off of the blood vessels in it. They would look at the intestines of an animal and say, well, this is what these intestines show. We can receive forethought. We can receive knowledge. We can receive instruction so that we can become better on our own. They would divine things. They would take certain parts and they'd sacrifice the heart unto a god. But everything that was left over, they'd eat it. Because it's still food, right? And the people of this day and age, in fact, we could read uh, in another passage in chapter number 2 of Revelation, the Nicolaitans taught the same thing. Well, what did they teach? They believed that, just like in 1 Timothy chapter number 4, where it says, you know, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. They would take that and they would justify it as saying, well, those gods don't really exist. So since that's a false god, they didn't really sacrifice it to anything. It's still food. In fact, you could probably buy it pretty cheap. Because even pagans know, hey, don't mess with that stuff. Some people would say, man, I don't want to eat that. Part of it has been sacrificed to a god. Certainly the other worshipers of different gods would say, you sacrifice that to who? No, I don't want that. But see, there were those among them that were eating the defiled thing and thus defiling themselves. And they would teach, they would justify it, they'd rationalize it because they're serving themselves. I want to eat that. It's cheap, it's available, it's right there. Maybe I don't want to labor and go through the extra work. Doesn't the Bible teach if man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat? But they would say, nope, that's convenient, I want it. And the justification was, well, those gods don't exist, so they couldn't have sacrificed it to anything. Well, they're not gods, but they are spirits. And they're doing it for the purpose of, if I give up, if I take this and sacrifice it unto that God, through my works, I can receive something to make myself more like a God. Lowercase g. That entire practice, witchcraft, sorcery, as the Bible would call it, they don't call it that. Even in their times, they wouldn't call it that. They would call it paying homage to something. They would call it as reverence towards something. May have even been a statue of someone who was once alive, but their history, their image, their persona has been corrupted, and now they are worshipped. What is all of that? That's witchcraft. It's idolatry. And God has nothing to do with those that forsake his worship and partake in things that have been associated with worshiping something else. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. He is a jealous God. And he says, don't touch the... Un what made it unclean? That others had devoted it to something other than God. Could have it. But see... The rules were with that. There's nothing wrong with that. That God doesn't even exist. And they're defiling themselves. And because they are defiled, if they were to enter the house of God, like they were associated with the church of God in Revelation, they defiled the whole building. They defiled the congregation because they were a part of them. Jesus commends them. You've resisted Satan. You've not fallen away from the faith, but you've got a bunch that are among you that because they have defiled themselves, I have ought against you now. You've put enmity, you've separated yourself from God. But then finally, quickly, because I've only got about five minutes left. How does the devil get away with these things? How does he continue to teach these things out? Because you won't find somebody in America, out in the open, sacrificing animals unto a false god. You're not going to find that. But how does he get away with it? 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. 
For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. They name themselves as one of Christ, and they do their best to look the part. Verse 14, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. It's what Lucifer means. Light bringer. But then verse 15, Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. In other words, be not deceived. God is not mocked. They're going to reap what they sow. But what does Satan do? He uses sleight of hand and smoke and mirrors. Everybody once knew that it was wicked because people were paying attention. But something would come along that just wasn't as crazy as what that guy was doing. And so people weren't as much against that because that guy's a whole lot worse. Well, according to this book, it's either holy or unholy. It's either righteousness or sin. But no, well, that's not as bad. We'll get to that later. We've got to deal with this first. And then this becomes more common. Maybe not commonplace, but more common. There's association there. We, we're okay with that guy because he's not as ridiculous as that guy. And then through hundreds and thousands of years, that guy got a little bit more moderate, more moderate, more moderate. And now something that used to be radical has been the same principle has been applied, just rebranded, retagged. And now it's something that you can find with a simple internet search. Something that you can find talking to somebody down at the coffee shop. And they might not even know that what they're doing in the eyes of God is defiling them. That they're really serving themselves. Because even Satan will throw the name Christ onto something if he can lead people away from the true Christ. He will transform himself into an angel of light to show people that there's something to this. But when they get to it, it's all smoke and mirrors. There's nothing there. But by that point, they're so invested into it that they know that there has to be something there. It just wasn't here. I've got to keep going. You study, that's all the Scientology is. It's a bunch of self-help improvement courses to get you started. And then they teach you you can further improve yourself. And by the way, I'm not talking about training yourself or equipping yourself. I'm talking about you having the power to be what you need spiritually. If God's opened a door for you to be a salesman, certainly take a better class to figure out how to be a better salesman. Okay? If, you know, Brother Phil did not get a job as a welder. We know that Brother Phil's a welder. He didn't get that without being trained as a welder. Okay? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you can learn to become what you spiritually need. You can fill in the gap that sin brought into your life. If that's the underlying value, there are a bunch of people out there doing that. Scientology would teach you that there's these spirits or these things that are attached to you and you can audit yourself by grabbing onto two tomato cans and looking at this little thing that goes up and down and you can get rid of those and that you can become an operating spiritual being or what they call a thetan and you can be OT. You can go clear. You can be clear of all those things and you'll have a great life because you don't have any of these little leeches that are sucking off of your energy. You know what New Age-ism is all about? If you get into harmony, if you understand mind, body, and spirit, if you can get them into harmony, then you can operate as a spiritual being when the rest of the world is caught in the muck and the mire of being all, you know, discombobulated. Well, mind, body, and spirit can't really be in harmony because my spirit is saved. My body is sinful. And my mind is between the two, and what I set my mind to do is what it will do. But the world will tell you, no, 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 you got to get all three in line. Well, what does that mean? All three have to be sinful, according to the Word of God. And if you're solely given over to what is against God, there's pleasure in sin for a season, but then you'll spend every season after that going further and further down the rabbit hole chasing for that pleasure that it gave you once. And that's the hook. That's the line in the sinker. 
But the spiritual warfare is not against. Nowadays, most of the, now there still are cases, but it's not common to see demon possession because the devil doesn't need that. He used to do those things to show that he had power. But now people aren't looking for the power to conjure up spirits or to see the future. They're just trying to make themselves better. And Lord willing, we're going to get into some of the things that have become so mainstream that Jesus told that church at Pergamos they become partakers of the unclean thing. And unwillingly, church members every day are seeking after things, are doing things, trying to do, take part in things that they have no right taking part of because it has origins in satanic influence. And because of that, they may not even, they may still come, they may still be a part, they may still give, they could even give a tithe check. They could be as faithful as anybody else. But if they are partakers of the, spiritually they're dead. They've fallen away from the faith. They may still go through the motions, but they're not a part of the faith. And in the latter time, no wonder Jesus said when he would come again, would he find faith on the earth? No wonder the Apostle Paul said that these things can't happen until there is a great falling away. Why? Because people are taking it hook, line, and sinker because people stopped saying, no, here's the light of the gospel and the light of the gospel says that's false. Because people looked away from this and looked to self.